And to your point, like, yeah, Russell is particularly shameless in this because I have no doubt it's calculated. There was nowhere else for Russell to go. He burned his bridges, not only with leftists, he burned his bridges with liberals and he burned his bridges with centrists because the allegations that came out against him were horrific. So with him, I think it is particularly calculated because every normal person doesn't like him anymore. Never mind lefty. And, and by the way, the reason I'm so hard on people like this, on the Tulsi's, on RFK, on Russell Brand, on Jimmy Dore, the reason I'm so hard on them these days is because I got burned by them. And so you effectively say, oh yeah, I'm a lefty. You, you nominally say that, but effectively your politics are just attracting the most psycho right-wingers in the country. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they just took that next logical step of sort of you know, taking the mask off, doing the full Dave Rubin. Look, I have to say that Rescue the Republic event that they did was one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. I mean, that that was just so embarrassing. That's the type of that 2008 Matt Taibbi would have wrote a devastating, like, seven-page article ripping every single one of those people on stage to shreds, mocking them ruthlessly. But the modern-day Matt Taibbi is what? On stage with the rest of them. You guys are just MAGA now. You're just regular, boring, stale, plain old MAGA. Congratulations. Well, you brought up Jimmy Dore a couple minutes ago in the context of the Afghanistan situation. Not only did he not defend Joe Biden in the poll out, but he actually contributed to the pile on that we talked about. I'm interested, you know, a little bit in continuing the conversation that we had on Crystal Kyle and Friends about the sort of post-left MAGA world, the Russell Brands, the Jimmy Doors. Something that I think is increasingly becoming noteworthy to me is this whole right wing to televangelist arc that seems to be the next step after you become a full-fledged right-wing commentator. Obviously, we've seen this with Russell Brand, started out as a pretty based progressive lefty socialist kind of guy out of the UK, then started dabbling in conspiratorial anti-vax stuff, went hard on the Dr. Fauci thing, the World Economic Forum, all those kind of you know conspiratorial subject matters that got really popular in 2020 under the pandemic era. But now we've both talked about it. He's gone full Christian. He's gone like full televangelist. And my opinion is that his next move, once his contract with Rumble is over, I think he's just going to sign with a mega church. I think he's going to go straight up into the world of evangelical televangelism, mega church stuff. I think that's where the money's at. You know, I think that's ultimately where the most deep pocketed, the most vulnerable and ignorant people are oftentimes older folks. It's actually uh, pretty unfortunate. It's kind of sad. You know, a lot of these old people are getting taken advantage of, frankly, by people like Russell Brand, these charlatans. It's even worse in the case of Russell Brand, given his immoral past, given the fact that he's never even admitted to his sins. That should be the first part of a religious transition, you know, confessing, hey, I, I did something wrong. That's why I'm becoming religious, not, oh, I did nothing wrong, but I'm also going to just randomly out of nowhere become incredibly religious. Seems weird. But I'm wondering, you know, in addition to your thoughts on that, do you think that someone like Jimmy Dore will also go down that road? Do you think he's next once the money runs dry from talking about Dr. Fauci? We already see people like Tucker flirting with it, talking more and more about spirituality and religion. I've heard Jimmy bring it up too. Is that where this is all going? So let me just say up front, I am literally the worst person to ask this question to because I'm the guy who was wrong every step of the way about the Jimmy Dore types and the Russell Brand types because I'm... I'm too naive. I take people at face value. When they say they believe X, I go, okay, you believe X. I don't look deeper into the motivations. And because of that, I was wrong every step of the way. So I'm pro probably the last person to answer this question accurately. Because again, my instinct is to say, take them at face value. What they are now is what they're going to continue to be. But you know what? You may be right. Because it, it might be, you know, after this runs its course, and if, if the Trump Titanic sit, ship sinks, they got to go somewhere else, right? They got to take another step. They got to go in another direction. And to your point, like, yeah, Russell is particularly shameless in this because I have no doubt it's calculated. There was nowhere else for Russell to go. He burned his bridges, not only with leftists, he burned his bridges with liberals and he burned his bridges with centrists because the allegations that came out against him were horrific. So the only thing he could do 
is pull the victim card and do the MAGA two-step and go to the right because he knows this is the only group that will accept me and they will buy the line that like, yeah, the deep state really had it out for this like fucking former MTV celebrity guy <laughs> who, who you know, is sort of a goofy comedian with long hair, right? Like this eccentric, like, yeah, real. Yeah, I'm sure the CIA and the deep state are really trying to target somebody like Russell Brand, right? So he had nowhere else to go. So with him, I think it is particularly calculated because every normal person doesn't like him anymore. Never mind lefty. And and by the way, the reason I'm so hard on people like this, on the Tulsi's, on RFK, on Russell Brand, on Jimmy Dore, the reason I'm so hard on them these days is because I got burned by them. I'm the one who bought their bullshit and their cover story of like, bro, I'm just a leftist and I'm criticizing the Democrats from the left. When I heard that, I was like, okay, that makes sense. I'm that oftentimes. So like, I can right. see where they're coming from. But Same. where it becomes misleading is, well, hold on now. You're spending 98% of your time shitting on Democrats and 2% of your time, maybe, sometimes, rarely, barely ever, shitting on Republicans. And so you effectively say, oh yeah, I'm a lefty. You, you nominally say that, but effectively... Your politics are just attracting the most psycho right wingers in the country. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they just took that next logical step of sort of, you know, taking the mask off, doing the full Dave Rubin, doing the full Tulsi Gabbard and saying like, oh, you know, Kamala is being outlefted by Donald Trump. And it's like, well, now you're just totally spewing bullshit. Now you're just lying. And I think, you know, you're lying. And so that's why I've been so hard on them. But yeah, to your point, again, I'm horrible at predicting these sorts of things when it comes to individuals. But maybe well, actually, right. I maybe the next lane is like, you know, like you said, it'll become more overtly religious or more overtly spiritual, right? And more Jordan Peterson-ish for somebody like Jimmy Dore. It's very, very possible. Well, Kyle, I want to I want to push back on your argument that you might not be the right guy to ask about this, particularly when it comes to Russell Brand and Tucker Carlson and potentially Jimmy Dore, the people that I think we, we don't even have to debate if they're going to just run right off of the deep end when it comes to wherever the money goes, right? People who are totally financially and fame motivated, they don't have an ounce of political conviction. But for people who don't remember Kyle from back in the day, there's a reason your show is called Secular Talk, man. I know you've watched Joel Osteen for hours. I know you've watched The <laughs> 700 Club for hours, bro. I've seen your commentary on it. It goes way back in the day. And I'm wondering, Kyle, do you have the kind of feelings that you got when you watched Joel Osteen, when you watched Pat Robertson? Do you get that kind of inclination? And do you agree with our analysis that Russell Brand, because he was a celebrity, because he was able to do stand-up comedy, because he was able to, you know, have a very real career. And not only are most evangelicals completely shit out of luck when it comes to celebrities, they've got like Kurt Cameron from Growing Pains as their number one guy and whoever played Dennis Chachi Quaid. On. Yeah, Dennis Quaid, right? These are their landmark guys. They would eat up Russell Brand. They're all deep, deep down, they're all star. That's why Jordan Peterson likes to be seen with them. That's why Ben Shapiro likes to be seen with them, even though he's lived like such an immoral life by their own standards. So do you see him having the capacity, Kyle, to be one of the big hitters? Do you see him being one of the guys that flies around in a PJ that has the, you know, 800,000 square foot mansion? And he has an international appeal now, right? Because he's so broadly known. And Christians, as you know better than anybody, I mean, they, they, uh, they have a, a quite, a, quite a reach. Well, you know, if Trump loses, I think these people are all going to take a reputational hit. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is, yes, uh, with Tucker and Russell in particular, yes, I think that might be the direction it goes in. With Jimmy, I'm genuinely not sure because I actually think he just seems kind of lost at the moment. Uh, I saw the video you guys did where he did, you know, this sad spectacle of like, I'm being suppressed because people don't want to watch my shitty content anymore and the anti-vax grift ended and nobody cares about COVID anymore. Nobody cares about Fauci or the vaccine anymore. So my logical conclusion from that is I'm being suppressed, not I'm in this really weird space that I carved out for myself where I say I'm a lefty, but I pander to right wingers all the time. Like he just seems lost to me and he's trying to find a new angle. But with Russell and Tucker, I think the signs are really there that they're going to try to go all the way with it. Right. We've seen Tucker now bring up spiritual shit out of nowhere like oh i think it's a spiritual battle we've seen russell now aliens yeah yeah and russell exactly and russell shamelessly doing prayers on stage I, look i have to say that rescue the republic event that they did was one of the saddest things i've ever seen in my life 
I mean, that that was just so embarrassing. That's the type of shit that 2008 Matt Taibbi would have wrote a devastating, like, seven-page article ripping every single one of those people on stage to shreds, mocking them ruthlessly, saying these people are so f navel gazing and self important, right? They overstate mm -hmm. like their place in the world and in, in the political landscape. But the modern day Matt Taibbi is what? On stage with the rest of them. And by the way, let's be clear the guy who organized the thing, Weinstein, his whole big idea was like, yes, we're going to back Trump, but also to make Trump more serious and more anti establishment, we want RFK as the running mate. Like right. that's, that's what these people are representing now. So look, yep. what I would say to them is at the end of the day, no matter how much they try to dress it up and put lipstick on the pig, you guys are just MAGA now. You're just mm -hmm. regular, boring, stale, plain old MAGA. Congratulations. You're in league with Tom Cotton. You're in league with Lindsey Graham and Mike Pompeo. You're in league with the warmongering neocons and the billionaires that are going to Mar-a-Lago and paying Trump money. Like, that's what you are. And I still think they think in their own minds, like, no, 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 we're different, bro. We're edgy. We're controversial. Well, no, you're not. Yeah, and it's not just that they come to the conclusion, which would still be faulty, but it's not just that they come to the inverse conclusion that we've come to, that Kamala is the lesser of two evils. It's not just like they stop there and say that Donald Trump is the lesser of two evils. No, they actually like they'll go to these events and do the Maha thing and with the banner in front of them. They will literally basically just sell out and be and prostitute their propagandistic capabilities to the Donald Trump campaign in a very obvious way in a way that's undeniable in a way that no one in left media does at least the people that we respect and pay attention to so it's it's totally hypocritical and i think the rfk thing as you said you know it's kind of indicative of the whole phenomenon because rfk he starts off as this democrat just like you know jimmy Dore and the rest of these people russell brand you know they all started off supporting bernie sanders rfk he starts off in the democratic party then he goes independent right now i'm an independent now i'm you know i'm against the duopoly just like jimmy Dore did but then just a few months later, where does he end up? Right next to Donald Trump on the stage, humiliating himself, selling out, selling out all of his followers who actually cared about fighting the duopoly, et cetera, et cetera, just like Jimmy Dore did. It's the exact same thing, which, again, is hilariously ironic because Jimmy Dore used to accuse Bernie Sanders of being a sheep herder. And he said that's Bernie's whole role. They were going to send him out here as this fake independent. And then what's he going to do after they inevitably crush him? He's going to turn around and endorse Hillary. He's going to turn around and endorse any Democrat. He's a sheep herder. That was Jimmy's analysis. That was his big accusation leveled at Bernie Sanders and people like you, anyone that supported Bernie Sanders for years and years and years. But then as soon as RFK actually does that, no, crickets no, no yeah. criticism there he's not a sheepdog he's still this uh, awesome truth teller even though he's a genocidal zionist it's absolutely crazy yeah it's always like we're gonna have conversations and build bridges with these like absolute nefarious charlatan ghouls on the right who are wrong about 98 percent of things like he's he's talking to like matt walsh the other day doing an interview with matt walsh and talking about the areas where they agree on what planet is it okay to do that with Matt Walsh, but then you castigate like AOC and Rashida Tlaib as sellouts, when by any objective analysis, those people are way more in line with what you say your politics are than Matt Walsh is, right? And, and my big issue with them now is like, look, they're just lying to you. These people are liars. Here are some facts you will never hear from RFK or Jimmy Dore or Russell Brand. And uh, RFK, oh, Trump is anti-war and Trump is anti-censorship. This is their big thing. None of them will discuss any of these facts. Trump increased drone strikes 432%. In fact, he dropped 2,243 bombs from drones in his first two years as president, which is more than Obama did in eight years. And all of us were together shitting on Obama for his drone war. Well, Trump dropped way more bombs from drones and they have nothing to say about it. Trump kept us in Iraq and Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, there was a 330% increase in civilian deaths under Trump. And by the way, he axed the reporting rules. So we don't even know. Uh, there's a reason why we don't know the details about the later two years of his time in office is because he got rid of all the reporting of the drone strikes. He bombed Somalia. He bombed Syria twice. He says, we're going to quote, take the oil from Syria. He let Israel illegally annex the Golan Heights which is Syrian territory. Of course, he assassinated Soleimani. He tried to coup Venezuela. He ripped up the Iran agreement. He dropped the Moab on Afghanistan. I had forgotten this, but somebody brought it up recently. He pardoned Blackwater war criminals who did the Nisor Square massacre and killed massive numbers of civilians. So like all of these things I'm telling you, this is what everybody needs to understand. These things I'm telling you are not debatable. This is an opinion. 
These are facts. And these are facts that RFK and Russell Brand and Jimmy Dore will never bring up to you as they grift and they pretend like Donald Trump is anti-war in the same way that when it comes to, oh, Donald Trump is going to protect the Constitution. This is the guy who said we should terminate the Constitution and all rules and regulations and articles to get him back in power. They won't tell you that Trump wants to punish flag burning with a year in jail, which is unconstitutional. It's against free speech. It's against the First Amendment. He sued CNN for $475 million because they called his election denialism the big lie. He sued Bill Maher over a joke for $5 million. He says he wants to open up the libel laws. He called for jailing journalists who reported on the Supreme Court abortion ruling early. Uh, he wants to deport pro-Palestine protesters. Like the list goes on and on. They won't ever bring up any of those facts, but they will go out there in their next speech and the one after that and the one after that. So Donald Trump is anti-war and anti-establishment and anti-deep state. Donald Trump is pro-free speech. And it's like, you guys are just liars because I know you know at least some of these things I'm telling you and you are just actively hiding it from your audience. You're hiding it because you want to protect them because you hopped on the bandwagon, you made your bed, and now you're going to sleep in it. But guess what? We're going to do our job and we're going to call you frauds because you are frauds. That's the bottom line.